Well, it says I'm life, and I hope we stay this way. You know, it seems like it doesn't matter where I go, my connection is weak, and um, it's frustrating because I lose you guys. And I hope it's, you know, it's probably frustrating for you, too. I know yesterday Tina was like, can somebody get Marilee a, a stand for a camera? <laughs> anyway, um, surprise. Yes, I'm here again today, and I'm excited because, you know what, my day has been pretty calm. And I thought, you know, I'm going to take a moment to be with you guys again. And um, the moment I go on, my phone starts ringing. Somebody's at the door. Dogs are barking. It's crazy. But anyway, and then I, of course, I go live, and then my, my signal's too weak. Anyway, today, I want to talk about starting over. Yes, one of you reached out to me and said, Marilee, please talk about starting over. So I started to think about it, and, um, you know, it's, it's one of those things where we've all started over. I mean, have you ever, like, depleted your bank account and thought, oh, my God, where did all my money go? Or have you ever contemplated going back to school, you know, after you've been out for a long time? I remember I did that. And um, it was when I was going through my divorce. And I thought to myself, you know what, I'm just going to go back and get my degree. And I did. And I remember the first time I was sitting in front of my computer having to um, write my first paper. <laughs> and I was thinking, oh my God, how am I going to do this twice a week and do two presentations a week and raise four kids and five dogs and keep my home and groceries and cooking? And I would just felt so overwhelmed. And I thought, I don't know how I'm going to do this. But you know what? I just sat there in front of that computer and I just wrote. And I you know, and then when you turn it in, you're like, God, I hope this works. <laughs> and you're panicked. But you know what? I had the courage to do it. And I actually did finish, and I was really proud, and a lot of good things came out of that, that experience. And that's part of starting over, you know, looking around, thinking, well, what am I going to do? You know, it's kind of like um, putting on a few pounds. If you've ever gone on a diet, which I'm sure you have, we all have, and you're looking really good and you're feeling really good and then life gets in the way and next thing you know, you gain 10 pounds, 15 pounds. You're like, damn, how did I do that again? And you got to start over. And it's just like, God, you just feel older and you just feel tired and you just unmotivated. And it's like, you know what? I love the way I am. I'm all right. And all of a sudden you're making allowances <laughs> and you know you're not happy. It's like you'd, you'd be better off if you, if you lost a few pounds, but you got to start over you got to find the motivation and get yourself to the gym, and, and you don't even know what you're doing. I mean, I'm going to talk for myself. You know, you go in there, and um, I'm an avid racquetball player, but, you know, to go on the, the weights and do the treadmill and, and do all that stuff and then figure out what to do, and you're like, I just don't want to do any of it. I'd rather play. I'd rather take a walk, and that's how you start over because just take a walk. Go with the dogs. I don't know. Enjoy nature. Just start moving your body. That is starting over. It's a small step. Next thing you know, you're back at the gym and you're feeling good and now you want to eat right and the ball is rolling and next thing you know, it was pretty painless. Well, that's the way it is too with your relationships. You know, we have to start over. And one of the hardest things, it depends on how, how long you've been in your relationship. You know, if it's been a few months and you're just like, well, that didn't work out. You know, it's kind of easy to pick yourself up and, and move on. But the longer you're in that relationship, you have changed everything about your life to accommodate, you know, that time, that person, those habits, those activities, whatever it is. So when you come to an end, you're like, ah, oh, geez, now what do I do? You're lost because you're used to that dance. So what do you do when the divorce hits and you're on the other side going, all right, well, I made it through that storm. Now what? How do I start over? What do I do? Because you're sitting there trying to sort out the pieces of, of your life, but some of the things just haven't changed. I mean, there's still constants that, you know, maybe you still have your job or you don't have a job and you need a job or your kids still need you. Your bills still need to be paid. You know, taxes still need to be filed and the groceries still need to be bought and food needs to be made and it's just like it goes on and on and you're overwhelmed going when am I going to find the time for me 
Oh, it's kind of like taking a walk. You just sit there and you think, all right, I need a breather. You gotta sort out the pieces. And it's, it kind of reminds me of like being a kid. You ever remember when you were a kid, you're thinking, how am I gonna know how to balance my checkbook? How am I gonna pay taxes? When will I ever buy a house? How do I do that? Everything is, how do I do that? Because nobody teaches you how to do that. Well, nobody teaches you how to go through a divorce. Nobody teaches you how to survive. Nobody teaches you how to start over. But I'll tell you what, it's a beautiful experience starting over. Because each time, it's like, yeah, it's rough. It's like getting yourself, you know, in that gym. Like, what the heck do I do? What do I do with myself? Honestly, you need to just slow down. Stop worrying about it. Relax. Do what you have to do. You know, what needs to be done in the moment. And cut yourself a break. At this time, at a delicate time after divorce, the last thing you want to do is set your standards so high that you're feeling really bad about yourself because you're not meeting all of them. You know, so maybe your bills didn't get paid on time. It happens. Maybe you can't cook dinner every night. It happens. Get help. Eat simpler. Start having smoothies. There's always a simpler way to live your life and accept it. You know, I, I remember when I was married, I would have food on the table in the refrigerator. I would have appetizers and desserts and my whole menu planned out for the whole week and my shopping, I mean, all this stuff. I am so not like that anymore. You know, I, it's, life is so much easier. And that's what we all have to do for ourselves. You know, it's like, just make life easier. So at the most difficult time when you're trying to sort out your emotions, when you're going through the divorce or even after the divorce, like you have that final stamp on your papers and you're like, well, I made it. Here I am. What do I do? What do I do with myself? And a lot of times the your knee-jerk reaction is, well, I guess I'll start dating. I could I could find somebody else, you know, let me fill this hole. You know, go and experience a love that I didn't have before, and that's why I got divorced. No. No, 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 no. Yes, you want to go out, meet people, enjoy your life, but you don't need to look for the love of your life in that moment because that little thing, that love of your life is you. In that time of self-actualization, when you sit there and you think, gosh, I can put whatever I want in that refrigerator. I can cook whatever I want. I can go wherever I want. I can watch whatever I want. I could fall asleep with the TV on or I could, I could just throw the TV out. This is my life. I can do anything I want to do and nobody has their thumb on me. It's the most freeing thought process and experience. It's like all this weight is lifted off of you as long as your thinking is correct. See, now a lot of people are into that, you know, oh my gosh, I just went through all this and I, my heart is broken. And No, you experienced, you know, however many years you put into it. It's called experience. And if you still wanted that experience, you would still be there. You put an end to it. Somebody put an end to it. Now it's time for me. Now it's time for me to be able to just take a break and sit on the couch and, you know, read for two hours if that's what I want to do. Now my whole morning has changed. It's like I don't have to get up and, and prepare for anybody. I can just get up and just have whatever I want and sit back down. Life changes for the better. So make sure that you're looking at the better, at all the opportunities that you had to just kind of put off the table for a while because you were living for everybody else. Putting your own needs aside, putting your own desires aside. You know, how many times did you have to say, well, I really don't want to watch that movie, but all right, we'll compromise. Okay, that restaurant again. I, God, I, if I have to go to that restaurant one more time, I'm going to scream. Well, you never have to go there again. You know, sometimes people don't like to get out of their bubbles, and then so they're just going to go to Coco's down the street every weekend. But maybe you're not like that. 
take a drive. Take a drive to LA. If you're anywhere in the in the neighborhood, go to 208 Rodale. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. The patio is lovely. The view is lovely. The food is really good. And you just feel like, you know what? You deserve it. And don't worry about the money. I'm telling you, not only are you worth it, but the money is just energy. And when you start living like, you know what? I'm creating my life. I'll spend the money that I want to spend. And you know what? I'm going to go and enjoy that dinner. And if I have to eat beans the rest of the week, so be it. I don't care. I'm going to do whatever it is I want to do that makes me feel good. And every single day, you look at the things that are around you in the moment. Stop looking in the rearview mirror. When you start thinking, oh my gosh, what I just went through and all the pain and it starts coming up, you have to be the watcher and realize I'm living in the rearview mirror again. I have to stop doing that. Right now, in this moment, my life is pretty good. I'm, I'm good. Even if there's bills to pay, even if you got your last 20 bucks in the bank, you're still going to be okay. Look around. If your life isn't threatened at that moment, then there's opportunity for you to go out and do something good for you or someone else. Take a deep breath. You're going to be fine. Just like learning how to balance a checkbook, just like getting your first job, paying your first taxes, buying your first house, walking down the aisle, starting over is no different. You're going to be just fine. So take this moment for you. It's a beautiful opportunity. You know why? I'm going to end this real quick. I don't want to take up too much of your time, but it's because remember when you got married, how young you were. You were a totally different person. And you grew within that relationship without really paying attention to you. But you got older and you met your responsibilities. You see what I'm saying? You see what I'm saying? And you're going to do it again. <laughs> I swear, man. I want to spend this time with you. But anyway, my doorbell's ringing again. I have another appointment and I got to go. So mwah. take care of you. You are worth it. Starting over is not that big of a deal. It's a beautiful opportunity. Take it. Okay. All right, you guys. I got to go. I love you. Have a great day.